Hello, welcome to my video on making a storage box with epoxy. Today I'm working on building Let's Resin Storage Box. I wanted to build this to hold dominoes, but I also have a few card games that lost their case. It is a silicone resin box mold, a storage container with a sliding lid. To start, opening the box there is the upper and lower mold and some instructions. A frame that can be built to hold the mold. The first step is to build the frame. Unfortunately, I don't have a workshop, so all my work is done on our dining room table. I use silicone placemats to catch most of the epoxy before the tablecloth. Epoxy is a two-part system that consists of a resin and a hardener. When mixed, they undergo a chemical reaction, transforming from a liquid into a rigid, virtually unbreakable plastic. There are two very important things to keep in mind while working with epoxy. One, the mixture has to be the exact correct amounts. And two, it needs to be mixed thoroughly. If either of these are not done correct, the epoxy has a chance of never hardening. So, after measuring, I stir for five minutes. This is something I would normally do by hand, but recently I got a mixer. I got a B-Glick handheld rechargeable mixer. I've used it twice now, and it seems to do the job. I also make sure to scrape the sides and the crease around the bottom to make sure it is all mixed. You can see all the air bubbles making the mixture cloudy. The next step to correct this is the resiner's vacuum machine. There are a few different settings on this machine, but I found the system that worked the best was to run it through the process twice, for nine minutes each cycle. You can see the bubbles moving up as the air leaves the resin. A quick flame to the bubbles at the top and the epoxy was as clear as glass. I'm very new to mixing in colours. As the epoxy cures, it transforms the materials into captivating landscapes within the artwork. The result is a mesmerising interplay of depth, dimension and a high gloss finish that mimics the beauty of polished gemstones or crystal clear water. I tried to make the deeper waters a darker colour and have it get lighter and clear towards the top of the box. Epoxy art allows for boundless creativity, from mimicking the crashing waves of an ocean scene to capturing the ethereal glow of a geode. Its ability to suspend and preserve objects within its depths makes it a captivating medium for modern artists. This project is a test for an ocean diorama in a different project. I wanted to test different colors, sand in epoxy and waves. This bottom half took all six ounces of epoxy I made. The top part is a different beast. I got the sand from beautiful Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. Adding sand to epoxy is an odd experience. It turns into a type of mud. It is thicker, like a paste. But like epoxy, it still self-evens. Then, I need to let it sit for two days. I believe only one day is normally needed, but in the cold weather of the Northeast, a little longer time is required. After two days, I pulled it out of the mold to see how it finished. As you can see, things didn't settle the way I thought they would. 
it looks like the sand fell all the way to the bottom of the mould in some areas. The finished product still looked pretty great. I like the way it looked like turbulent waters. It came out more artistic than realistic. But the whole point of this was to test sand and how it would work. Now I was ready to conquer the top piece. For this, I wanted the illusion of a tropical relaxing beach. I've been stalling on this piece because it is a more artistic work. The main thing I wanted to test was my ability to create the feel of waves. There had been some issues in the past with my table being level. Epoxy is self-leveling, so a level platform is needed. I'm trying an iArtka leveling board. For a project this size, it's perfect. The largest part of working with epoxy is the setup. Measuring and mixing cannot be overstated. I like using a straightforward ratio of one to one, easy to set up. Once the measuring is done, there is a full five minutes of stirring. I use the mechanical mixer, but at the end, I check to make sure the sides are scraped and the bottom creases are mixed. If not fully mixed, epoxy has the ability to never harden. I enjoy using the resiner's vacuum pump to get as much air out of the epoxy as possible. I run it through the process twice, for nine minutes each cycle. Each time I remove it from the vacuum, I use a lighter to remove top bubbles. Sandy beaches are some of the most popular vacation destinations for a reason. The feeling of warm sand between your toes, the sound of crashing waves, and the endless blue horizon all contribute to a sense of relaxation and peace. The beach has a way of washing away worries and leaving you feeling refreshed. Wonderful memories and relaxing moods were the images I was going for with this piece. I had done a lot of research on this type of epoxy art, but my first attempt was a total failure. I believe this didn't work correctly because I poured the paint directly on top of the epoxy. I believe you need to create white epoxy to make the waves. For the top part, I will be using light blue for the water and white for the waves. Deeper water should be a darker blue. waves are created by using white paint mixed in with the epoxy. This creates a smooth white epoxy. A heat gun is then used to blow the white epoxy and blend it as a current wave. The darker sand is from beautiful Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. The white sand was bought from Amazon. It might be a little too light and come across as bleached. In the future, I might need to get a different colour of sand. The attempt is to make it appear like the white sand is dry and the darker sand is wet. Waves are a mesmerizing dance of energy that ripples across our world. They grace the surface of oceans and lakes and even course through the delicate fabric of sound. Their form can be gentle, like the lapping of water on a sandy shore, or ferocious, like the crashing fury of a hurricane.
epoxy usually hardens overnight. But often in New York, it might take more than a day. After letting it sit for a few days, I was able to remove it from the mold. This was my first time using this mold. With all the features involved, water, waves, and sand, there was a lot involved in this setup. Next time I use this mold, I will try something a lot simpler. But it is interesting the way it turned out. I like it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I am currently working on a longer video for an epoxy chest set with a nautical theme. It's a super long video, but it should be fun. I hope to see you there.